Hello and welcome back to Yellow Card Vanguard. We've got a ruling video today. It's been a while, I know. So today we're talking about the double ethics buster and how it works. Or rather, how it doesn't work sometimes. If you'd like to see it not working in action, you can take a look at the stream board where we test it, which is linked down in the description below. In this very quick video, I'll go through all the steps and all the mechanics on why exactly it might not work. So we'll just jump straight into it. So what is the double ethics buster play? It's pretty straightforward. It's when you ride one Ethics Buster over the other Ethics Buster to get the skill at both skills at once. Of course, as we know through normal Vanguard rules, you can't have two skills at once. When two skills are trying to go off at the same time, you choose one of them to go off one after the other. Of course, they have the same timing because it's when placed or when rode from. So both the one we ride from activates and the one we just rode activates. For the sake of simplicity, we'll call them Ethics A and Ethics B skills. This helps us not get confused. Let's choose to resolve Ethics B skill first. We'll pay the cost by discarding two cards, no problem. And then we stand the unit, which in this case is going to be our Vanguard, because we want to attack with our Vanguard three times this turn, ideally. And then we move to attack with our Vanguard. And that would normally be all okay. But for those of you that played back in the G era with Dominate and with Shirinui, you will know that this causes a few slight issues. So first of all, let's look at the mechanics of how an attack from a skill works. According to the rules, section 10.33, to attack is a keyword that can occur in card text that initiates an attack. Okay, no problem. And when a skill initiates an attack, it goes through attack processing, which in this case is section 7.2. Okay, no problem. And section 7.2 states, when something goes through attack processing, that is everything from the attack step, section 7.4, through to the close step, section 7.8, inclusive. Okay, no problem. It's basically just one thing pointing to another thing, pointing to yet another thing. But we can keep track of that. Basically, what it's saying is that any time a skill causes an attack, you start at 7.4 and go through to 7.8. No problem. So, we have Ethics B skill trying to resolve with its attack. And as part of its attack, it has to go through attack processing, which involves it going through 7.4. For those of you that have played Dominate, you'll know that 7.4, or the battle step, or for those of you that know the rules in general, there's a little section called 7.4.1.2, which states that there's a check timing before the attack even begins. No problem. Yeah, you know, it's pretty straightforward, right? You want to check for things like, you know, when this attacks or uh, at the start of the attack step or whatever. The problem here is that we have this check timing as a result of the skill of Ethics B during, a, during another skill resolving. And as we all know, during a check timing, if there are any skills that are standby waiting to resolve, they must be resolved at the next possible immediate check timing, which in this case is the attack check timing. So despite Ethics B, resolving its skill but not having attacked yet we need to resolve the skill of ethics a so let's just do that let's say that we do that we'll discard two cards stand the vanguard again despite that it's already standing because it hasn't attacked yet very important and then attack with our vanguard but wait a minute we're literally in the middle of an attack step from ethics b how can we attack during an attack and the answer is we can't so thanks to the guys in discord who got in contact the specific answer is that due to the ruling of 10.33.13, after the battle begins, if there's text during that battle that states attack a unit, which there is, if this text of Ethics A says to attack, which is during, occurring during the attack of Ethics B, after the ongoing battle ends, the resolution for that attack a unit occurs. So what that means is, you can't have a battle within a battle, but rather, once Ethics A skill has resolved, the battle of Ethics A skill will only occur after the battle of Ethics B skill. Let's think about how that looks like as a rough rough, which I'm gonna to try to draw on the screen here, no promises, right? So you've got the resolution of Ethics B, which initiates the attack of Ethics B, but within the attack of Ethics B, you have the resolution of Ethics A, but the attack of Ethics A doesn't come until after the attack of Ethics B. Does that make sense? Like, I know it's really hard to like track, especially when you don't have a, like a concrete example, and I can't really provide that with my limited drawing skills, but that's basically what's happening. So to put in a really, really simple term, what you do is you resolve Ethics B, you discard, you stand, and you begin to attack with Ethics B. And then at the start of Battle B for Ethics B, there's a check timing where you resolve ability A. You then discard to try to begin attack A, but you have to hold back because there's already an ongoing battle. So you 
complete, finish and end battle B, and then afterwards start battle A. Is that, I think, hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. But anyway, so that's, that's like the big plan of what's going on. And now here's where it can fail to work, right? Because you resolve the battle of ethics B first. So you resolve the battle, you know, you attack, you do your drive checks, your opponent guards, whatever. Let's say that that battle hits. If it hits, Ethics Buster doesn't restand. Instead, it gets minus one drive. And the implications that you use, like, you know, Scarlet Bird or whatever, to stand your Vanguard during the main phase so you can attack him during the battle phase. But remember, there's no timing for that because right after the battle B, we have battle A that needs to go off. And if you're rested at the start of battle A, the battle fails because of 7.4.1.4, which is a specific timing that occurs after the check timing before the actual battle that checks whether or not that unit can actually battle. Which means if the first one hits, the first battle, which in this case is battle B, tries to move forward. When you get to battle A, your unit's rested now, suddenly, for whatever reason, and therefore you can't attack. So the battle doesn't go forward. So that's why it doesn't work, as it were. However, however, this is where it gets even more interesting. Because the rules also clarified that because battle A never happened, or rather it the battle does attack doesn't happen, but you move to the close step as part of resolution anyway, all the time. Like you know, 7.4.1.4 states move on to the close step. Because you move to that close step, even though there was no actual battle, it's counted as not hitting because you didn't hit your vanguard. Which means that even though battle B hits the vanguard and applies you the minus one drive. Battle A will still stand your vanguard, even though it didn't actually attack. So what you're basically doing is when you use the double ethics play and the first one hits, you're basically discarding four cards to deal one damage and get the guaranteed restand. Or to put it another way, you're discarding two cards so that you don't have to call Scarlet Bird or Lift Taurus. Is that a good trade? I don't know. You know that's, I personally don't think so, <laughs> especially when Scarlet Bird draws a card and replaces itself. But that's basically what goes on. So yes, you don't have battles within battles, rather they get queued up immediately after one another. However, even though they queued up one after another, one of them hitting still causes the other one to not attack, basically. And lastly, even if, if the second one doesn't attack because the first one hit, you still get the end of battle skills that would go off from the Ethics Buster skill. I know that's a lot to take in, and again, you know, I apologize if my diagram is not the best, but it's, you know, it's something that a lot of people were really curious, especially when the card first got revealed, like, how does this work? What does this mean? You know, and there was a lot of discussion in the judge discord, especially, you know, saying like, does this work the way we think it works? You know, how does this work? How does that work? There was even comparison to the Shiranui Zanki and the Drachma ruling that came out a few years ago, if, for those of you that remember that, except this one's obviously a little bit more complex because now you have attacks within attacks, which we now know not to be the case but it's good to have that clarification. So hopefully this answered a few questions, although I'm pretty sure it raised many, many more. So if you're still confused or you're still unsure, feel free to leave a comment down in the description below. I'll try to respond to as many as I can this time around because I know it's a very confusing subject. And if nothing else, you know, leave us a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitter and all that sort of good stuff. And hopefully I'll make another one of these very soon or hopefully I won't have to make another one of these very soon. But if I have to, I will. But until then, See you on the next video, have a great day and bye bye.